Não vamos nada. Não vamos nada. Hello guys, the Shit Game Plays. I'm Fabio Pisco, and today we have a new video. Today's video is a CPU comparison between Ryzen 5 3600, Core i5 10400F, and Core i5 10600K. The three CPUs are tested at stock and overclocked settings. The Ryzen 5 3600 stock and 4.3 GHz on all cores. The, the i5 10400F at stock emulating a B460 motherboard, 2666 MHz RAM and completely stock. And uh, the overclocked one is BCLK overclocked to 4.11 GHz on all cores and uh, 3200 MHz RAM. Okay. As for the i5 10600K, we have stock and 5.0 GHz. Well, as usual, all the parts, all the parts, or almost every part I use in my testing videos uh, is bought by me. And one of the things that helps me get all these parts is the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less, $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key. And to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila, you have an activated system for only $14. So guys, without any further delays, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And let's now go to the benchmarks. Well, today's first game is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We have several data here, so you might want to put the video in full screen. As expected of this game at 1080p and 1440p, we reach a CPU bottleneck, even below 100 FPS, which is great for CPU testing. We can also see that Ryzen 5 3600 isn't able to push more than 80 average FPS in this benchmark, while the stock i5 10400F with 2666 MHz RAM gets almost the same results as stock Ryzen 5 3600 with 3200 MHz RAM. Once we use the full potential of a Z490 motherboard and do some BCLK overclock plus RAM frequency at 3200 MHz, the i5-10400F gets a huge FPS boost and actually manages to somehow stay really close to the i5-10600K at 5 GHz, showing us once again that frequency itself doesn't matter much. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone? Now with Remedy's Control, which by the way is an exceptional game if you never played it. 
This game is also known to be extremely heavy on the GPU side and that can be seen in the results. Even at over 130 FPS, all the CPUs are up to the task pretty equally, with the i5-10400F having a bit higher 1% lows once BCLK overclocked. Maybe once we get over 150 or 200 FPS we start seeing a CPU bottleneck, but truth be told, you would need a really strong GPU to run this game at around 200 FPS high settings. Once again, all CPUs are up to the task of running this game at around 140 average FPS. Now with Ghost Recon Breakpoint, where the passage from the X-11 to Vulcan did help hugely in terms of performance. In this game we can see that even at 135 average FPS, results presented at 1440p, the game is GPU bound, with minor differences in terms of the 1% lows. At 1080p and over 160 average FPS, we can see better CPU differences, and this time even the stock i5-10400F is ahead of the overclocked Ryzen 5 3600, mostly in the 1% lows. Using it PCLK overclocked to 4.1GHz and with 3200MHz RAM puts it on par with the i5-10600K at 5GHz, which is pleasant to see. Overall, great results for all CPUs. This time with the heavily played Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this game may not seem like it, but it is actually really GPU bound and not CPU bound, and that is shown in the results. Even at over 330 average FPS, the results are virtually the same for all configurations tested. Meaning that any of these configurations will handle the game at over 300 FPS without a sweat. Maybe we will start seeing differences at over 500 FPS, I don't know, but I mean, most people have cards weaker than the RX 5700 XT, so most people will be playing way below those numbers. Moving on. Testing now Red Dead Redemption 2 with its own inbuilt benchmark, which I must say you should take with a grain of salt. I tested this game several times before in several resolutions and several machines, and the results are always strange in the 1% lows part, and this test shows us the same. So let's focus on the averages. Well, this game is known to be super GPU dependent and that can be easily seen by the results. Even at 1080p with a mix of medium and high settings, RX 5700 XT can't push over 100 average FPS, which is sad. Anyway, in terms of CPU numbers we can see that the averages are pretty equal and you'll only notice a difference if you have a really, really good GPU and aim for over 100 FPS, I'm supposing. Anything below that and you'll have the same results with all CPU configurations.
Now with another Vulcan title, World War Z. In this game, since my native resolution is 1440p ultrawide, the game wouldn't let me test at 16x9, hence the 21x9 resolutions. As for the results, I do believe many people may be playing this game at over 200 FPS, but if you are around 170 average FPS, the difference you'll get in terms of CPU is quite small. In this game, both Ryzen 5 3600 and the i5 10600K benefit from overclocking, but the one that was falling behind at 1080p was the i5 10400F. That once used in a Z490 with higher frequency RAM and some BCLK overclock, easily matched up with the other results. Overall, till 170 average FPS, all CPUs are easily up to the task, with no visible letdowns. The last test with these three CPUs is Cinebench R15. Take in consideration that this is a synthetic benchmark and that, like seen before, the results don't quite match with the gaming results. But well, by this test we can see that Ryzen 5 3600 benefits only a bit from overclocking to 4.3 GHz on all cores. The i5 10400F, on the other hand, maintained the single core performance but improved the multi core performance by 55 points. The i5 10600K was the one to benefit more in terms of single and multi core performance once we raised it to 5 GHz. We've seen a difference of 11 points in single core and almost 100 points in terms of multi core, which almost puts it on par with Ryzen 5 3600. Now, let's move on. So guys, uh, I really wanted to do more tests with the i5 10600K at 5 GHz, but it happens that the i5 10600K wasn't actually mine, it was a build from a, a client that I actually tested, he let me test the, the i5, so I did it. Um, so the next two games tested, Metro Exodus and Need for Speed Heat, will be only with the i5 10400F, uh, against the Ryzen 5 3600. Well, it is better to have something than to have nothing. Uh, these CPUs I do own, the i5 10400F is here and the Ryzen 5 3600 is there. So, well, let's go to the benchmarks. Father will kill me if he finds out I went up with you. Twice if he learns we've been to a Hansa off-limit zone. So, Metro Exodus. This title will ask the most out of your GPU, but in terms of CPU performance, you can actually run it pretty well with even a lower end one. From Ryzen 5 3600 stock to the i5 10400F in a Z490 motherboard, there was only a difference of 4 average FPS and 7 FPS in the 1% lows. On the other hand, these differences can be noticed in all resolutions, which is intriguing or intriguing, whatever. Overall, the game runs pretty smooth in all of these CPUs, which are only two, by the way. The last game of today's tests is Need for Speed Heat, which is a great game to test due to being poorly optimized. Due to that poor optimization, the game will tax your GPU and CPU in an horrendous way, but that is a conversation for another day. In terms of results, we do have some really interesting ones. Overall, both CPUs benefit quite a bit from overclocking, but the i5 10400F is the one that benefits the most in this title. An interesting thing that happened is that the machine with the i5 10400F did run considerably slower at 1440p and 4K and I did notice that in terms of gameplay. I did go into the task manager to see if the machine was running anything that wasn't supposed to, confirmed the graphical settings and so on and it was all normal. The i5 10400F was just running considerably slower at 1440p and 4K. But well, this might have been just something really odd happening with that machine, but it is quite strange since it even had a clean Windows installation. But anyway, 
Let's now go to the conclusion. So concluding guys, well, what processor, what CPU is really worth it for its price? Well, there are several options and I'll have to explain why, uh, what and why. So Ryzen 5 3600 was some months ago around $160. Now, due to the out of stock crisis, uh, because of, uh, of the virus and everything, everything together, uh, seven, no seven nanometer dies and so on. Um, what happens is that the prices are actually higher, so around 180 or in some cases $200, which is not a really great price after all this time. Um, in the other hand, um, the i5 10400F is actually a pretty good performer for what it costs. It usually costs less than the Ryzen 5 3600 nowadays, usually, like almost every time, and it performs really, really well, not even talking about temperature-wise, because uh, the, CPU, the, the CPU is really damn cold. The CPU temperatures are really, really great, so uh, lower temperatures, even a, a $15 cooler can do it pretty decently, the CPU won't pass uh, much the 60 degrees, uh, which is great. Um, so, you can do it with a really cheap cooler, temperatures are better, price is lower and if you really want you can get the Z490 motherboard and you can actually get better performance in gaming than the Ryzen 5 3600 even overclocked. Now we all know that Ryzen has its, its advantages of course uh, against the, the i5-10400F, for example if you want to later upgrade to the to the newer gen, the newer the newer Ryzen gen, the 4000 series, you can actually do it. Motherboards themselves are actually um, uh, less less expensive. For example, you can you can get a decent B450 motherboard for $100, uh, while a decent Z490 motherboard will cost you around 150, 160. So there is that price gap. Still. If you get uh, a Z490 motherboard and the i5-10400F nowadays, the price difference, um, the price difference between that and the Ryzen 5 3600 with the B450, or if you want the B550, the price difference will be almost null. And overall, the i5-10400F will perform will perform better even more if you do a small BCLK overclock and put at least. Uh, RAM frequency of 3200 MHz, yes, because you can actually run a 4400 MHz RAM on this baby like I'm running now, so it will make the FPS go even higher, so yeah, uh, you have those advantages. As for the Ryzen, the, the Ryzen 5, yes, you have the advantage of um, a less expensive motherboard and you can get uh, a newer series CPU, but in the future, if you want, you can also get an i7, uh, for that same Z490 motherboard and it will still last you um, a pretty good amount of time. So it all comes to what you want or to the brand you like the most. In terms of gaming solely, the i5-10400F is still the best bang <laughs> It's still the best bang for buck, okay? In my opinion, you can't get better for now. The i5-10600K is way more expensive. Temperature-wise, once again, the 10th series are pretty pretty great in terms of temperatures because Intel actually did the thing that they they should have done earlier which is reducing the height of the the die and also uh, soldering the um, the HIS which makes the the temperatures be crazy good compared to the previous generation so you also have uh, pretty good temperatures even at 5 gigahertz with a chip cooler uh, you have pretty great performance and you if you actually push um, and get a way better GPU let's say an RTX 3070 when it comes out or an RTX 2080 Ti well uh, maybe the i5 10600K will push a bit more FPS due to the GPU being way way better but overall uh, it isn't worth the price and the best performance the best performer for the price is indeed the 10400F. If you want 
um, better uh, upgradeability for the future, then get the Ryzen 5 3600 and then upgrade to a new CPU while keeping the motherboard. And well guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Do not forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video. Most of all, share this video because that is very, very important and helps the channel a lot. And well, I guess it's all for today. See you in the next one. Oh wait, also leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about these results and what you think about this video. Now we can go.